Yes, good afternoon. Welcome back to the channel. Hope each and every single one of you are doing well. And thank you all for the recent support. The amount of comments, the amount of likes on yesterday's video. Everyone was enjoying it. So we're running again. More news regarding Eze. Apparently Tottenham are prepared to go into a bidding war for him. There's been news regarding Tony's future, saying that he does want to leave Brentford. And there are a number of clubs interested in signing him, including Spurs. And Ali Gold and Dan Gilpatrick have said the last few months that a huge clear out at Tottenham is coming with up to 13 players up for sale. So we're going to break all that down. Make sure you go down, smash the like on the video if you haven't already. We get 500 likes yesterday. If we could get 600 likes on this video, that would be absolutely insane. And 58% of everyone who watched yesterday's video was not subscribed. So go down and hit that subscribe button. Now we'll start with the as a kind of... Tottenham, according to some reports, are prepared to go into a bidding war for Eze. Now, we've spoken about him a lot. Various channels, various news articles, reporters, journalists have spoken linking Eze to the Lily Whites. And this got me thinking, how many teams could potentially be in this bidding war? Now, the only three teams I've actually seen that have solid concrete links to them are Newcastle and Chelsea. Now, we'll start with Chelsea. They're £1 billion already into their rebooting their the way their club wants to go, their journey, their process. They've brought in players like Madueke, Nkonku, Cole Palmer, Badashile, Sterling, Jackson, lot of good attacking talent. Now, the reason why I don't think Eze will go to Chelsea is because of Christopher Nkunku. Now, of course, he had a big, big injury, ACL injury, out for a long, long time. And when you actually look at Nkunku's numbers, they are very, 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 very good. Um, I'm not going to deny it. He is a top, top player. And fortunately for the Premier League, he was out for majority of the season. He only played 11 games in... A Chelsea shirt got three goals in a Leipzig shirt last uh, two seasons ago. Sixteen goals and four assists in twenty-five games. Thirty-four goal contributions in thirty-four and eighteen in thirty-two. So he is a top, top player, and I think they're the way we watch the uh, Bowley and Chelsea's ownership are coming out saying that they want Nkunku to be in the number ten role. Now I don't think Eze is realistic for Chelsea. They're in the Conference League. They are a little bit over the place, that they're getting rid of managers. There seems to be no plan and for their managers. There's definitely a plan for their players. They're putting players on five, six, seven, eight-year contracts. With Tottenham, it's a little bit different. Newcastle have also been linked. I look at their number 10s. You know, another interesting one, don't necessarily play with an out-and-out number 10. Bruno uh, Gramares is their kind of deep-line playmaker who can play the eight role, can play the six. He's been linked to the move away to, to Arsenal and, and and by Munich, does Chelsea potentially send in Bruno Gomares? I mean, they bring in a DM and play Eze in the number 10 role. I don't necessarily know. Then there's also the, all this stuff regarding Newcastle's FFP. Does the likes of Alexander Isak or Gordon or Gomares go to and potentially bring back bring in Eze? I'm not so sure. And then I look at Spurs and think, well, other than James Madison, we don't really have anyone from a midfield perspective who is an out-and-out playmaker. We've got Kulusevski who can play in the eight row on the 10, but he's predominantly a wide man. But Eze, for me, according to some reports, and my opinion, I agree with these reports, is Eze wants to wants a new challenge and Tottenham are prepared to get into a bit more and make him our marquee signing. Now, there's reports coming out saying he's got a release clause. There's reports coming out saying he doesn't, you know, I think in this market, because of the season he has just had, right, with 11 goals and four assists in a Crystal Palace shirt, you know, who can play on the left, who can play on the right, who can play in the number 10. I genuinely think in this market right now, the way we're going, he is probably going to be a 60 to 65 million pound signing. Now, he's part of the same agency as a lot of our players. His contract expires June 30th, 2027. He only signed a new deal in November for Crystal Palace. I think 
the, the, the question is, how are we going to play Eze? Because you're not going to bring a 65, 60 million or 50 million pound player into the team as a squad depth. We're not a Manchester City. We're not a Real Madrid. So does he play in the front three? If he does, what's our best lineup in the front three? Where does Richarlison play? Where does Son play? There's a lot of answers that we need kind of bit we need answers to, essentially. I look at the front line right now. I think our best front line is Richarlison, Son, and Brennan Johnson. And then you could either play Kulu in the in the midfield, have Kulu coming off the bench, or have Kulu back up for the nine roll. Son can obviously play up front and play on the left. But where does Eze play in terms of when you look at our best midfield, this is another question. What is our best midfield? I think the most technically best midfield would be Basuma, Sar, Madison. So then which one of those is being rotated to bring Eze in? Could Eze play the eight role potentially? But for me, Eze does his best, best business on the pitch in the final third. So could he potentially play left wing? Could he potentially play right wing? Now, when you actually look at his, um, how many times he's played in each position, he's number 10, out, uh, yeah, outranks every other position he's played. 73% of all the games he's played in his career have been in the number 10 role. Now, obviously, he spent time at Crystal Palace. He spent time at Wickham. He spent time at QPR. And he's been very versatile in terms of the amount of different positions he's played. So if he plays on the out wide, who is going to be rotated? Who's going to be dropped? I think it's a nice selection headache to have for Ange Postacoglu. Then you've also got players like Timo Werner coming in. You know, Brian Hill and Solomon, they're potentially going to be leaving. We're going to speak about the big clear out very soon. But it's got me thinking in terms of what's our best midfield and what's our best attack on the players we've got now going into next season. Let me know down below your best front three and your best midfield going into next season based on the players we've got now. Speaking on the midfield, Conor Gallagher, the links are relentless. Every single day you go onto the socials, you go on Instagram, you go on or t Twitter or X as it's called now, Gallagher is being linked with Tottenham to an insane level of reports. I think both Gallagher and Eze will be Tottenham players next season. So, if we bring in Gallagher, obviously his best role is the number eight, which means Benton Court or Bisuma, you know, get put on the bench. And this is what I'm talking about when it comes to squad depth. It's a very challenging situation for Postacoglu to keep every single player happy. We've seen it at Manchester City where the likes of Leroy Sane, Zinchenko, Gabriel Jesus, Sterling have all, you know, got to the point of where they're very, very, very good players, but you can't guarantee everyone game time. However, a £60 million signing for Tottenham, he's got to play. So I think Eze will probably be best, potentially, in some games, playing alongside Madison in a 10, and then Tottenham signing an out-and-out -out DM. And then we're, when we're, because that, I think, will be better for Tottenham to break down low blocks. Then when we're playing against a Man City and Arsenal, I think Eze will go into the front three and potentially replace, you know, Human Son on that left-hand side, and Human Son goes to the middle, and then you've got Johnson, Eze, and Son. And then out of position, Eze comes into the, into the midfield. You know, it, it's a very, very difficult decision to make for Ange Postacoglu, but I believe he will make the right one and change it on a weekly basis, uh, depending on the teams we're playing. Plus, what you've got to remember is this is what Ange Postacoglu wants. He wants to be in a title race. You know, make sure you keep dropping a like on the video. Now, this huge clear out, let's talk about this. 13 players are up for sale. Undon Bele, Hoiberg, Giovanni Lo Celso, Joe Roden, uh, Jed Spence, Emerson Royale, Ryan Sessignon, apparently Ben Davis. If the, if the money's on the table and it's the right amount of money, Richarlison and Bissouma, Brian Hill, Manuel Solomon, no one that I've just named right there, other than Basuma and Richardson, I think will be here become next summer. You know, the, the, the report has already come out that Ryan Session will be, uh, we will not be renewing his contract. So 
I, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I, I don't think he's anywhere near the level of player that everyone seems to think he is. Um, for me, now he, he, he's gone. It's as simple as that. Ryan Sessegnon is gone. That's one player out the door. What I alluded to in yesterday's video is everyone keeps telling me it's not a problem. This homegrown issue can be solved with Gallagher, Eze, Tony, and a couple of youngsters brought in. Our homegrown system's sorted, but players are Undombele. We Like Undombele in this market right now, you, you'd probably bite your hand off for 15 million pounds, 27 years of age. He has got one year left on his contract, right? He has played 19 games here for, for Galatasaray. Uh, he's gone over, won a league title somehow, right? He's, what is he, 27 years of age. He's 28 in December, a year left in his contract. You probably will just say, see you later, adios. Since he signed for Tottenham, he spent 40 games um, on loan at Napoli, 30, uh, 26 games for Galatasaray. So that's 66, and I think he played around um, 21 games for Leon on loan. So in, during his time at Spurs, he spent more games on loan than he has for Tottenham. He's been here since 2018 and has not made 100 appearances yet. And this, when it comes down to when, when Ange Postecoglou keep, keeps talking about the mentality, you can have all the natural ability in the world. But if you haven't got the right mentality and the right way of thinking, you're going to be useless and you're going to be not effective. And that's exactly what Ndombele is. An interesting one for me is I don't necessarily think it's going to be the best time to sell is Giovanni Lo Celso. You know, good technical player, can play the number 10, can play the eight, can play out wide. He's another one, been out on loan to Villarreal, been out on loan, you know, to a number of teams. I believe he had one more loan spell. Same as Brian Hill, he's been out on loan a lot. I think there is a player there. I just don't think it's a Premier League player. But if it's not the right time to sell, there's, there's talk about he's open to a new contract negotiation. I, I, there's so many difficult questions that need to be answered very, 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 very soon. You know, Purple Panel, um, who is an independent football journalist, he covers the transfer market, mainly about um, the Premier League. Uh, and Spurs Connect put out yesterday saying um, Tottenham will try to sign a Premier League proven striker. And Ali Gold also come out to say that Ivan Tony is one of the names who is being brought up. For me, like, Ivan Tony is the one. Ivan Tony is the one, as that's number nine. You know, he, he like, I've spoken about him on a, on a number of occasions. He is the one. Bring this guy into into Tottenham you know 28 years of age the goals are absolutely relentless and I didn't realize um Ivan Tony is part of the CAA uh, agency group which means he essentially has the same agents as a lot of the Tottenham players which he's part of CAA uh Stella we're CAA Base Limited. I don't know if they're under the same umbrella as a company, but hypothetically, if he is part of the same agency as a lot of the Tottenham players, we have got to go in. Have to go in. The number of goals this guy scores for a Brentford side is unreal. Stay hydrated, by the way. Um, Ivan Tony for me, is the one. We've spoken about a number of strikers on this channel. Dominic Solanke, Santiago Jimenez, Ivan Tony, Vlahovic, Gukarez, yeah, everyone from Jonathan David up until this player, that player. Ivan Tony, genuinely, like I, I don't understand. Let me let me just bring up the guy's stats. Um, this season it might not be the best purely because of the fact that he only played half a season, but he he's just for me he he's the one. He's absolutely the one. Yeah, last season's stats are an absolute joke. Now, this this big clear out. Players like Brian Hill and Manuel Solomon, I do expect to leave. Ben Davis and Roden, do we keep or do we sell or do we loan? 
Roden will start with, I think, I think he'll go back to Leeds on loan. And I think Ben Davis will stay for one more year. And then the other, the other uh, headache we've got is if Res- Regulon and Session go, who is our backup left back to Destiny Udogi? We've seen this season, we've seen this season that he's not going to be playing 38 Premier League games a season. You know, there's a couple of injuries that we've now seen in his game. You know, he's now missing the Euros. He's now going to be out of that. I generally think that he will get injured again next season. And if Mickey van der Ven's the backup, he's obviously got a few injury problems. Someone like Dougherty um, from Luton, I generally think this guy, um, his name is Alfie uh, Dougherty. This is the guy. Let me bring up this guy's stats uh, on the screen just to show you all. Homegrown, 23, 24 years of age. He's 24. He's 25 in um, December. Look at this guy's stats. And bear in mind, he's a left midfielder who played left back all season uh, for Luton. This, I'm going to bring up these stats on the screen just to show you guys. Right? Non-penalty goals. He's in the top 27%. Assists, top 6%. Um, expected assist goals, top 9%. Shot creating actions, top 6%. Progressive carries, top 15. Touches in the opposition penalty area, top 11. Defensive stats aren't the best. I'm not going to lie to you. But he's played as an attacking fullback, which is what Destiny Udogi is. Blocks, top 18%. Let's have a look who he's linked with, who he's compared to. Uh, Philip Kostic, who is very, very, very linked to us. There's obviously Regulon in there. Um, Mahali. There's a few other players. Let's look at, um, while we're on this, let's look at you doggy. Let's look at his stats. Yeah, I mean, look, they're absolutely ridiculous. Your doggy's defensive stats are a lot better, right? But Dowerty's attacking stats are much, much better. So, you know I mean? Look at the passing stats. They're absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. If we was to bring in a Dowerty for me, I mean, how long has he got in his contract? I think he's got two years left. Um, I I 100% would would go in for him. 100%. 1,000% would go in for him. 24 years of age, left midfield. He's valued at 10 million euros. Eight assists and two goals. 10 goal contributions in 37 games for Luton. Can play right mid, can play left mid, can play right back and left back. Um it doesn't say when his contract expires. He's being linked to a move for Brentford to potentially replace Sergio Regulon. Another left back I'll be looking at is someone like Rico Henry. Rico Henry at Brentford, another homegrown player. You could potentially snap him up for a relatively good price. You know, he's 26 years of age. He's valued at 20 million euros. You know, only played five games last season because of that terrible injury. But... He can play left back. He can play left midfield. His contract expires, I believe, um, 2026. So there's options there in terms of who are we going to bring in as the backup left back. The clear out, I do think the only one that is settled to go in the next 10 to 12 days for me will probably be Hoiberg. I think he's going to go first. I think we're going to struggle to get rid of Undon Bele. Jed Spence apparently wants to play for Girona next season. That's another one. See you later. I take five million pounds for him. So it's going to be an interesting summer transfer window. Make sure you are subscribing. Make sure you have liked the video. You know, I do think Eze and Tony are the ones. They're the marquee signings. Bring in Ivan Tony. You know, Arsenal are looking at Sesko. Chelsea are looking at Oshiman. Man United are looking at Vlahovic and Kudus. He's the one out there for me where I think that signing can go under the radar a little bit. You're bringing him, you're bringing Eze and you're bringing Conor Gallagher and then you add a few squad players around like Dowerty. Genuinely, I I think right now that would be an unbelievable transfer window. And that's not going out and dropping 150, 200 million pounds. That's just doing smart business. Smart, smart business. You know? A lot of these players are under the same agency. So it's not exactly like we're going out there and and we're, we're signing superstars immediately, you know? Let me know your your 
thoughts down below if you haven't already. Make sure you do subscribe. Make sure you have liked the video. I will see you all in the next one. Take care. Enjoy your weekend. I am out.